Dear brothers and sisters, uh, we want to thank God for leading us through life challenges, for giving us life up to this moment. I want to welcome all of you in the name of Jesus for the Global Family Net Come Meetings. I want to greet my pastor, Pastor Ndekeja, who is the coordinator. Father, I want to thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of the facilitators in this great camp meeting. My dear Corpri, uh, uh, I want to greet the other facilitators also. I want to greet you all, pastors, doctors, evangelists. I want to greet you. May God bless you as we present. May the name of the Lord be glorified, be praised. May God draw his family back to himself. I want to thank uh, the committee, Dr. Esther and others who are part of the committee who uh, decided or agreed that I'll be part, I'll be one of the facilitators in this camp meeting. It is not by might. I thank God for the opportunity and the topic that I was given to talk about is a good one. God, may God speak to all of us as we listen from the different facilitators in this camp meeting. May we be restored. May we, may we be renewed. May we be uh, rejuvenated to walk another journey with God. The theme, I will go with my family. I will go with my family. I want to thank God for this theme also. It is a powerful theme because Ellen White says that if we shall go, we must go with our families or else what stops one from going may stop the other from going. May we pray as we begin. Our Father in heaven, I want to thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to learn, to learn from you, dear Lord. May your spirit find a resting place in each one of us, dear Lord, that you may teach us your word. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for staying with us. May the name, may your name be glorified and may all people who are listening to this be blessed. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Our dear friends, I want to thank you so much for being a part of the, meet, the camp meeting in any way where there are no listeners, where there are no students, teachers are not needed. Whether you are a facilitator or uh, a congregation, we want to thank God for you. I was given to talk about the family or family life and psychotherapy. Psychotherapy, wherever it comes, it comes to heal because the word therapy means healing or treatment. So wherever it comes, you see that it is quite related to uh, healing or treatment. So I want to begin to have my short introduction about family. We have many definitions of what a family could be. Probably you may have your favorable or favorite uh, definition of a family or family life, who the family members can be and where the family can be found. I'll give you mine, but they are not in, uh, all exclusive or all inclusive. Yes, even yours can be a true or is a true definition. Now, the definition of a family sometimes depends on the type of a family. But I want to say that a family refers to a group of one or more parents and their children 
living together as a unit called home. It can also mean having someone, having someone to love you unconditionally in spite of, in spite of you or your shortcomings. Living together with this person who loves you unconditionally in spite of your shortcomings, that is what it means, unconditional love. I also want to look at uh, different types of families. Families can be nuclear families where we find mommy, daddy, and their children. Families can also be extended families where we shall find cousins, uncles, aunties, grandpa, grandma, and other people in the family, even invited guests or friends can be a part of a family which we shall call extended family. Also, we can have a family called matriloco, matriloco family, which may include a mother and her children, mother and her children. We may also call it a single parent family. Another family can be a patriarchal family. Patriarchal family where we find husband, wife, and children. Also, we have a conjugal family where we find husband, wife, and the unmarried children. All these are families and we want to talk about family in general. Family in general. Well, I was not told how long my talk should be, but I will just give it around 30 minutes. Then I'll consult later. Family and its members. Family and its members. According to what I have already said, a family has some parents, has children. There are families without children. Also, it is a family. It is, there are families without children. We should not close them out. It is a family. Probably it is a wife and a husband who have not yet got children. So that is a family. We want to look at the importance of the family. The importance of the family. The home is, a family lives in a home. So I'll talk about the home and I'll talk about the family also. So these two words may be used interchangeably. The home to mean a family and the family to mean the, the, that group that has a place of a God. The home is the first church. We are looking at the importance of a family home. The home is the first church a child should experience. You see, the family is a church. It's the first church, very important. It is a place to be presented to God for blessing. To be taught to pray as Jesus taught his disciples to as Jesus taught his disciples. And to learn how to listen to God's voice like Samuel. The members of the family the members of the family uh, bring the child, the, the child to church as Jesus was also brought to the synagogue, was taken to the synagogue those days. To be blessed, he was taken there to be blessed and prayed for on one on a regular basis, 
all on one occasion we pray for the children our children are, 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 are given to god in um, uh, at birth or when they are still young and this was also practiced by jesus's parents and this is also reinforced by teaching by the teaching given in church yes the parents are equipped to teach christian values and morals to help their children learn to face and overcome challenges and overcome challenges as david did with goliath and to offer a godly example to a godly example to the children the godly example that the parents can show to the children is the example of a perfect marriage and what family life looks like friends in eden 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 the garden of eden was the first home the garden of eden was the first home brothers and sisters a place of reverence for god a place of responsibility for creation a place of respect for each other it had been created to be a place of harmony and peace of tranquility and plenty of blessing and bliss eventually it was disfigured it was disfigured by the devil and by disobedience disrespect and this honor distrust friends this is not good news a family a home was disfigured one day one time by disobedience by disrespect and by dishonor by distrust in the garden of eden all this happened and this was the beginning of distrust was the beginning of dishonor was the beginning of disrespect in the family we pray that god will help us father may you help us in jesus christ we have a new adam and we have a new eden the kingdom of god father this one is good news this one is good news to every one of us in jesus christ we have the new adam and we have the new eden as a result within the church family we expect to find the qualities listed in uh, colossians chapter 3 verse 11 in galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and elsewhere in the bible we may search and the qualities are love joy peace goodness kindness gentleness faithfulness patience patience self-control humility compassion forgiveness integrity honest along with respect for others our content should not be found in our families attentive listening attentive listening open sharing open sharing open sharing where there is disrespect it is hard to have open sharing where there is contempt it is not easy but in this family the new family 
there is generous generous giving and holy living oh god this is a family that each one of us would love to be each one of us would love to see each one of us would love to stay in this kind of a family in every christian home we look to see modeled men women and children loving each other with compassion and sharing sympathy sharing and sharing even caring we, we have to see devotion we have to see dedication inside each heart we hope to cultivate a tender vulnerability and a courageous accountability friends the theme of the camp meeting is i will go with my family there is accountability there is accountability ladies and gentlemen accountability the family that god has given you you need to be careful as you look after it let it be represented let the qualities they are found therein uh, be the qualities that the bible mentions in galatians chapter 5 verse 22 there is accountability a vision of christian marriage become uh, becomes that of two gifted people called by god to journey together in love to serve god that is the vision of christian marriage the vision of christian marriage to journey together i will go with my family it says i will go with my family you must journey together if you will go with your family you must journey together brothers and sisters wives and husbands children and parents we must journey together we must journey together this does not mean at any point that the journey is easy it only means that we must carry each other's patterns we must be uh, we must be caring we must be sharing we must be carrying each other's patterns showing compassion forgiveness honest kindness gentleness faithfulness patience with each other may god bless us may god help us help us father help us father we must journey together two gifted people called a husband and wife they are called by god to journey together in love to serve god even as they are home fosters breathing space to follow the personal call of christ while building up the whole body of christ we need that togetherness, building up the whole body of Christ, that when one is hurt, everybody is concerned. When one is hurt, it's everybody's care. We need to go in. Brothers and sisters, I will go with my family. While building uh, the Christ body, we must be kind to one another. We must be kind to one another. We must be forgiving. The lesson teaches us about forgiving. Forgiving as we forgive. We leave every history. Then we move on. We move on. We move on. We are called upon to forgive and free ourselves. Such a relationship brings glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, brothers. Hallelujah, sisters. It brings glory to God, just as holy singleness does. 
holy singleness. I love that. Holy singleness. Holy singleness. I want to repeat it. Holy singleness brings glory to God. Brothers and sisters, if you are still single, not yet married, be holy. You can still stay single and be holy. Let no uh, blame be found in you. May God help you. May God help you as you move on. It is a matter of obedience to the call within a relationship with God that is supremely, supremely overall. A family that is coming together, a man and a, a woman that are coming together to form a family, they are coming together also to show obedience to God and to bring glory to his name. Brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, we want to thank God for this come meeting. And as we journey on with this family life and psychotherapy, we shall look at many issues that have affected the family. The plan and the purpose of the family is to prepare every individual for a creative and spirit-filled life every individual this family brothers and sisters may not only look inward this family can still look outward because it is a family that is called upon to bring glory to god this family and the life that is in there the children probably it is an extended family brothers and sisters when these children, when these aunties, when these uncles move out of the family, does the community realize that this family is a godly family? How are we grooming our children? How are we doing it in our families? It is said commonly that a family that prays together stays together. Do we pray together, brothers and sisters? We are called upon to be forgive, forgiving, to be honest to one another, to be kind to one another, to be faithful and to be patient. Let us not forget that we are still on earth. In one way or the other, we may, for, we may uh, be or perpetrators or what in unintentionally of something wrong. With patience and with love, we can receive the corrections. And we can also be willing to apologize and be forgiven. And remember, don't forget that the lesson teaches us to forgive. We have been taught to forgive even before, even before the offender comes to ask for forgiveness. Brothers and sisters, may God bless us as we live in these families. Let us live and do the work of God, starting from home as the first church. As the first church. Children will be allowed to preach. Teach the children to preach in the church at home. Teach the children to apologize apologize when they offend teach the children brothers and sisters we are called upon to teach our children in coming to know who we are in the family we are better able to give ourselves in loving service to others we are just stewards parents we are stewards Children are gifts in our families. In everyone therein are gifts. I've lived alone for some time. But it's not good living alone. You need to be with some people. You may be unmarried but independent. But find some people to stay with. 
it makes you feel good. And each time you do not agree with the people you are living in, it, it doesn't work well with you also. We are called upon to dissolve our differences early before they lead us into depression. No family is perfect. So we need to seek the help that is available in order to come closer to the ideal. We need to seek the help. We need to seek help from counselors, from pastors, from the Bible, from our master counselor, Jesus Christ. We need to seek help. Brothers and sisters, the plan and the family and the, the plan and the purpose of the church as a place for the lost to find God's love and be freed from sin fits into the larger plan for the redemption of the whole world. And this is part of the family. Person by person, family by family, nation by nation, we will experience the true meaning of grace. The true meaning of grace. Are you ready to be changed from glory to glory so that the image of Christ shines in your life? Are you ready, brothers and sisters? to be changed from faith to faith, to be changed from strength to strength. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, brothers and sisters, that the image of Christ will shine in your life? Are you praying daily for your family to be healed from its besetting sin? Friends, we will look at many of these besetting sins in our families, besetting sin. Families are disfigured. Families are disfigured like the family in Eden, the first home, was disfigured. Families Many families have been disfigured by the devil, by incest, by addiction, by violence, promiscuity. You may call it infidelity. And anything else, mention it. Believe me, you families have been disfigured. We shall look at many of the issues that have disfigured our families and that have uh, made us fall short of the purpose of the family that God created us to enjoy. We will look at many of such. We will look at many of such. As I end this presentation, I want to say that may God help us. That when everything is said and done, Christ will shine in our lives. Christ will shine in our families. Christ will shine in our children. Christ will shine in our grandchildren. Christ will shine wherever we go. People will witness. People will testify because of our honesty, our kindness, our every quality that he talked about in Galatians 5.22. Brothers and sisters, it is now or never we need to change. 
We need to pray like we have not prayed before. We need to call upon the mild Father to clean our homes, to clean our families, so that together we will go with our families. Where are we going? In this journey of Christianity, we are heading to heaven. And when God sends us to minister, we are going to minister in his behalf. We want to minister that we shall decline and God will be seen. He will shine in us because we will be powerful. Uh, we will take a powerful message. Friends, where infidelity reigns in the family, the family will have no strength to stand and go. When the father will go, the, husband, the wife will remain because they know that what you are going to preach is not what you are practicing. Friends, I want to call upon you. I want to call upon all of us to renew our vow, to renew our commitment to each other. I have just said there is no perfection. We all make mistakes, but the Bible says in the book of, chap uh, of Luke chapter 6, verse 31, that as you want others to do to you, do to, to them also like that. The way you want others to handle you, handle them in the same manner. And I believe that everything is possible. Let there not be doubt in you, brothers and sisters. Everything is possible. And Jesus says to Jairus in Mark chapter 9, verse 23, that if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. May God help us, brothers and sisters. May the Lord who ordained, the, may the Lord who blessed us with families, with children, with wives, with husbands, bless us this day. Bless us throughout the camp meeting that everything that we shall do will be to glorify his name. And together with our families, we shall go. May God bless you. Let us pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I want to thank you so much for leading us through today's presentation. May you meet us at our points of need, dear Lord. Meet us at our points of need. We have realized that like the first family, the first home in the Garden of Eden, Father, our families, our homes have been disfigured. Father, as we continue with the committee and as we look at how we can bring our homes back, dear Lord, may you rest upon us, dear Lord. May you plant it in us that everything is possible. No divorce, no divorce. We are not giving up, dear Lord, together with our families, together with our children, together with our wives and husbands. We shall go to accomplish your work. We shall go and inherit the kingdom of God. Journey with us, dear Lord, that we may not be burned, but we may be transformed. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen.